So we're happy for, to see you today. This, this talk is in conjunction with our exhibition, A Breath of Fresh Air, and it features uh, paintings by Ruslan Kais, Laura Mays, Benjamin Passion, and Julie Zahn. So at least we have Ben and Julie here. So you guys are gonna have to do the, <laughs> do the heavy lifting and you can feel free to, to unmute yourself, Julie and Ben, and we'll, uh, we'll get the show on the road. Once Ruslan comes, we'll fold him into the, to the uh, festivities. So I'm going to um, spotlight Tina's video for you. So what we're going to do is go through the show and the artists will, uh, you know, speak about themselves, speak about their work. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have one of Ben's paintings. So Ben. This is uh, one of my paintings. Uh, yeah, this is uh, oil and acrylic on canvas, and it's um, a 20 inches by 16 inches. Uh, this is a painting I did. This upper left on the side kind of is like a fence, kind of can hold it in. And the purple coming around the top kind of holds it too. Oh. And you call it canoeing through molasses? Yeah, it's kind of what this year has been. Uh, or this, that's what this year has felt like. <laughs> yeah, right, for sure. So are you like uh, bouncing off ideas when you paint or thoughts or how do you generate them? Uh, they're usually imp improvised. Uh, just always trying to make them better, oh, just a little bit better. But, uh, our paintings kind of are like uh, still lifes, landscapes, paint, uh, portraits, or compositions. I always like the big Kandinsky uh, compositions. They always remind me of landscapes. Mm -hmm. I also really like the uh, Oscar Kokoschka, the big cityscapes he did. I always really loved those. But I think too with the landscape, uh, a lot of things, um, the cityscape kind of gets left out. I kind of like the um, abandoned uh, commercial space that's over, kind of gets taken back over by uh, mother, like nature. Mm -hmm. That's a little too like graffiti influence too. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Ruslan also, one of Ruslan's is in the middle here, and he achieves a very impasto surface. Um, he's responding to the landscape fairly directly at like a very specific moment uh, in time under certain atmospheric conditions. So it's very specific for him. And you can see he's using his paint in a very, uh, like full bodied. Yeah, very direct painter. Remind me of um, Tom Thompson when I saw his movie the other day. And this series, I think the whole series of his is, is from a trip to Canada, actually. So. Oh, yeah. Sort of. Mike? Can you hear me? <laughs> <Really fun. laughs> yeah, you watched. Just in time. We're talking yeah, speaking of Bevel. We're talking I about your painting. Do you. Are you, do you see it? I see it, I yeah. see it. I, just, I cannot see myself, but, everything, but I can see everything else. <laughs> do you want to speak about this particular piece? Um, basically, the last, the, the series which presented, uh, majority of them influenced by the Canada visit from the last year. Uh, I started recently, I decided to go back, back to school and uh, just trying to simplify things. It's uh, the idea of the painting is just to get the right relationship right away. The idea was to do them as fast as possible. Ideally, I wanted to do, do, do them in one setting. 
but of course it's never works because when you for five years you're working with a large abstraction and you're trying to get back to something like uh, uh, 16 by 20 uh, I really try to do smaller but I cannot fit I am I'm a big guy I have a problem to fit in a 30 by 40 canvas when I started to uh, do a smaller things I really this is as small as I could go so I've been doing landscapes I've loved doing landscapes for, um, I started off doing landscapes when I was a teenager at this particular place in West Ocean City. Um, and I was painting then and, you know, then I, um, it sort of changed the air. It was like a little fishing village when we first um, were there, but over the decades, it changed a lot. And I thought there, it didn't offer me anything. It was very upsetting to me because, uh, you know, what, what you love, it's so different now with so much development. So I started painting in Maine. Um, but then I started, after about 10 years, I started uh, not, several years ago, I started doing little square pictures every day in a sketchbook. Um, I would time myself and do, I think it was six or eight in a session and it really loosened me up and trained my eye in a different way. So then I could suddenly do the, you know, do the view again back in West Ocean City. Um, and so I go up and, you know, I do these square, usually square or rectangular pieces. Um, it's, what has caught my eye is this one particular roof and the side window and a chimney. And, you know, you need that obsession with something and that just has absolutely caught me for years. Um, and I try to, there are a few glimpses of Assateague Island. That's why they're kind of the Assateague series. Uh, you can still see the island a little bit in the background. Um, but so this is the work I do now um, a lot. And these are combination watercolor collage Yes. Pieces? I stretch um, BFK reefs and then I usually draw a border, not always, but, um, and then I use material like woodcut or um, paint. There's, you know, you can mix pigments with um, soybean, um, a binder. There's, uh, I learned a lot of things over in Japan on how to work with paper and pigment and glue, and I utilize that in my work. They're, yeah. they're a very intimate experience. Good, I'm glad, um, yeah. I, sort of I, pull, I, they pull you in and, you know, into this frame and keep you there. Thank you. So Ben, we're back to, to you. This is a bigger piece. Uh, this is a 40 by 30 painting. It's uh, an abstract painting kind of focused on color. Um, kind of using that white of the background to shine through. Uh, kind of reminds me of like a when you're in the city and there's like a tarp that they put up to block the view, but then they have to cut holes in it so that the wind won't take it. And then, but the holes get ratty and you can kind of look through and see all the uh, mess of everything. Kind of reminds me of these two almost like legs right here at the very bottom or limbs in, in the painting. You've got an interesting uh, combination of textures in your work. Like some are very fluid, like almost like watercolor wash, but then you get these built up, you know, impasto areas, which is quite interesting. I start with the acrylic. Well, that's how I started painting is with acrylic, so I can get these real thin watery washes and then kind of work have more heavily into it with the oil. And the oil is more uh, flexible, at least for me. But this is another, you can see a lot of uh, lines too in the with kind of graffiti mark 
I used to have a studio at 915 uh, Spring Garden, and there were, it was the abandoned train station that would always be overgrown with weeds, and the graffiti would just kind of get painted over and over and over and over and over, and I really like to watch that, especially, too, with the weather changing and the light changing. It looks great. So now this is uh, one of Laura Mays's landscapes. And let, I mentioned that we attended uh, Northern Michigan University together. Um, that's before I came to Philadelphia. And uh, she was uh, a painter and a printmaker. So I think, you know, that shows in her work. We've got a, a lot of pattern and layering um, and design, but also painterly effects. So Laura was able to send me a, a statement. So I'm going to uh, read it for you. <clears throat> so I like the challenge of manipulating layers of color, shapes, and patterns to bring about what could be into what is a more detailed image. My focus is normally on nature or nature is what my work develops into. Trees, flowers, water, or even buildings in a natural setting, all of which become somewhat identifiable. Printmaking allows me to layer color into recognizable images as does painting. I feel that one process lends itself to the other. When printing, the process is Im immediate each time the paper is pulled from the plate, as is working with acrylic paint on a flat surface. There is no preconceived drawings or sketches. It is what I can make it into that intrigues me. I call it spontaneous development triggered by my imagination and emotions of the moment. So that uh, hopefully gives you some uh, insight into where uh, Laura is coming from. So she lives up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, the Republic, actually. Julie, we're coming up on uh, your bigger piece. This seems a little different from some of the things you had been working on. Well, um, you mentioned um, size of the work. So I, um, I had a, a pile of 24 inch by 24 inch panels all prepared. Um, and so I, uh, I took a, a small piece, which is in the show and I expanded it. Um, I've wanted to do this for a long time. I just haven't done it because I like my work to be really fresh and look spontaneous. And I thought I couldn't pull that off, you know, being so rote as going from a small, small to large working. But so I, I, you know, I'm developing the process of working this way. Um, I, I had a blast doing this. I, what I want to, um, you know, the, like the yellow sky, I, uh, was very interested in the quality of that paint, um, being as smooth as I could get it. Uh, it's about eight layers of, of paint. Um, and I also have always wanted to paint my woodcuts, like paint, you know, do paintings of my prints, for example. So I got a little slice of that in the one roof. Um, but you, you know, I realized, well, sure, I'm, it's, it's as spontaneous as doing the little pieces because, um, you know, you might have it all set, like, but, um, but then you change things. You know, it's just the same as working small. I really had a great time with this. And I was doing this down where I am right now. I'm in, um, I'm in Bethesda, Maryland, um, in my mother's studio because my my mother passed away. But my father is now um, he's ailing a little bit, um, so I'm here to help as much as possible. And so I did this down here. And my mother has a whole workshop, printmaking workshop. So I I was pulling a lot of 
you know, I did the printmaking down here. It was a lot of fun. I, I could um, just ink up all those greens, you know, <laughs> inking up and then pulling them through the press and then cutting them out, you know, it's good. I must it's really been special to be able to work down here. And I, I had a specific goal, which was to get at least one of these larger pieces done for this show. So. Yeah, I must say the um, yellow uh, doesn't translate over Zoom that well. When you see the piece in person, it really glows, you know? I mean, it has that. It's a warmer, warmer yeah. than it looks there, yeah. And it has depth. Uh-huh, good. Beautiful piece. Thank you. Well, you know, I do, I, I just am looking for something in my work and I think that piece, it, it met this, what I was looking for. I was very happy with that little blue piece right in there, that bright blue, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, I can't wait to do more of those. So you have a batch of these set up, You're ready What's to that? go? You have a batch of this size set up now? Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to make eight more next week. So I'll have 12. The goal is to make 12 of these over the next, um, by the end of June. That's my goal right now. So when you're on a roll, you know, you got to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're Ruslan again. So Ruslan, I will ask you to unmute with not trepidation, but. <laughs> How's that? Yes. Is it good? Oh. Yes. Okay. Is. That's an older piece. Uh, two years in the making. Probably was repainted five or six times. A lot of sanding. And uh, when I thought I got it, I looked on a previous photograph and I thought that maybe everything was in vain. <laughs> But it is what it is. Um, abstract landscape, vertical size. Not not uh, not not the biggest paintings, not the best paintings. I did what I could. Canadian sky. <laughs> it's a very intense painting to me um i start uh, with the photograph uh, which i usually do or recently i asked a few permission from few friends to use their imagery but uh, it's only jump start and then i am uh, putting more and more paint and um, that's what happened it starts i mean it's funny because i am um, um i ben have a similar um, the te technique is similar to Ben. I also use the acrylic as other painting. But um, I thought uh, in my process, I first I try to do the acrylic painting first. And when it's completely screw up, I'm going over with the, with the oil. And, um, but um, I don't know, two years of applying the painting. I, uh, when I was in the Pennsylvania Academy, I have a saying for myself that there is no bad painting, there's just not enough paint on the canvas. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know. It well, is. Uh, you know, when you, when you paint this way, it could, it could turn into mud like very easily. So how do you, I mean, it seems like you have to be very systematic when you paint this way. I am, I am far from systematic. <laughs> uh, probably my secret is uh, a large variety of different pellet knives. And... Um, I mean, do you have like big... Like I'm, I, I've worked with a big and small and flexible and handmade and vintage. I was hunting eBay to get vintage pellet knife who are a uh, hundred years old, but it's beautiful. And so there is a Japanese and American and Russians. And uh, I don't know, I have, I have a box, box full of them. And, um, but um, the most important things there, this is a little bit older painting. And um, if right now what I'm trying to do, they keep the first impression, uh, from what I paint, you know, basically trying to 
do as fast as possible and the quickest possible on the smaller size. This was um, more what I call adventure painting. You start and um, you just follow wherever it leads you. Because there is, um, I'm not such a good artist and I don't have control of everything. And it's more closer to the, I hate this, everybody compared it to the blues session, but it really is. You know, you start and you take it wherever it takes you. I, um, sometimes it will get you to the good side, to the sun, sometimes it's <laughs> get you to the dark spot. Then I throw out the canvas and start a new one. But I do like the green uh, paint in the sky. This is this is what this is one of my favorite pieces, uh, and um, I actually this is done uh, on the board, and there is um, I am starting to use um, usually uh, in American tradition people don't like to use uh, cardboard as a surface as a painting surface. This is very European, Russian, and French. But there is something about just a plain cardboard. Well, it's not a plain, it's a fancy one. It's an acid-free crescent illustration board. Uh, I think uh, 12 or 16 plies. But there is something about it what um, take paint a little bit differently. And uh, it was done in two sessions. And I did squeeze out the paint from the tube. And um, I think it's come out uh, kind of very nice. And um, uh, being, I'm, I'm, I'm using myself, I call it uh, sunset impression to the, as a reference to Claude Monet first painting, sunrise exp exp impression. The first painting, Impressionist painting, which came out for the world was Claude Monet painting, Sunrise Impression. And uh, Monet is my favorite artist and I call it Sunset Impression. That's, I found it amusing, but nobody laughing with me. So once again, my jokes fall for, once again, I'm falling flat. Well, surprise, surprise. Thank you, Ruslan. <laughs> Where are you? All right, now we have a trio. We have Julie on the left, Ben on the right, and another uh, Laura Mays in the far right. Well, this is a place a lot like Canada and Northern Michigan, you know, it's Maine, where I painted for 10 years, about a month every summer. And it took me about five years to be able to get a handle on that view till I could get anything I liked of that. Um, but, you know, up in Maine, it's all about the rocks, the water, the islands, the sky, just, and the energy and, uh, so um, mixed media, I think there's some, um, the silver I believe is um, paint, acrylic paint, but it's all archival and, you know, mixed media. So did you say you, do you do these like on the spot? Yes, on plein air, yeah, yeah. Oh. I, yeah, I would go out, you know, um, pretty much all day, but maybe come home for lunch. We rented a house um, on this little island. And uh, I love being totally by myself when I paint. It's really important. I get very upset if I even see anybody walk by. I just like, I don't know why I have to have this, my own little universe. Um, and uh, it's very nice there because uh, there's nobody around hardly. You know, no no boats even. Um, you can't get onto the island. That there's, I think there are three ferries a week, and um, 
about two miles of road. So most of the island is preserved by the um, Island Institute. So there's no development. It's all right around this little harbor. People, everybody lives around the harbor because apparently the whole, the island is haunted. <laughs> I really believe that because I really, I get spooked. You know, I would walk at, you know, 7 a.m., go walking with my grocery cart full of art supplies to spend the time on some remote area of the island. And it was really scary, honestly. I could just feel that all these, just terrifying to me. I would run half the time, you know? I don't know, it's got so much atmosphere there, just wild. Mm. Um, but we were there for about 10 years in the summer. Very lucky to have found it. It was just by chance that a friend of mine wanted to vacation and she actually found it. And we continued going there, um, but I, yeah. Anyone who's painted in Maine knows what it's about. It reminds me of some of those John Marin uh, landscapes. The one yeah, you know, John Marin, I read that he would do a lot of his work in a boat, just going from island to island or wherever he was going. Do you know much about that? How he I, I don't, I know Tom Thompson did, uh, he was a fishing tour guide. I mean, I think uh, of his work more like Ruslan's, but I really do like uh, the John Marin watercolor. Yeah, I love John Marin. Too. I know someone yeah. said uh, when he was at PAFA, he used to just goof off. And uh, when the teachers would come by, he would pretend like he was working very hard. Uh, who was that? <laughs> who? John Marin. <laughs> he went to PAFA? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. Huh. Yeah. I believe so, at least. <laughs> oh, Julia yeah, was asking, what's the name of that painting? A uh, Wild Ocean. I'm a little bit um, challenged by titles, to be honest. I don't like them either. Yeah. Well, this one, Ben, you've titled um, Born Under a Bright Star. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's inspired. I mean, that's a title title. Yeah. And the molasses title was excellent, I thought. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Born Under a Bright Star, it's kind of like a, a prophecy or a superstition, however you want to approach it. But that, this blue, or the blue in the top to me is like, a, a, you know, the night sky. And then down here, it's almost like a, a layering of fields or crops and all, all sorts of patterning of a landscape. But. So Ben, are you like coming back and forth to these over a period of time? Yeah, over many years. Uh, usually just keep, keep working on them. Um, just kind of like almost aimless, aimlessly, kind of like Raoul uh -huh. Ruplan, uh, you, he kind of uh, tries to go in one direction, then loses all control, and uh, it can, it takes you where it takes you. Kind of like the, the jumping off point. But then it, it can become something else. And that kind of uh, something else too can come in too with, with the title at the end. Because uh, with abstract paintings, people want it to be something. They, they're not comfortable with, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, without a title. They're not comfortable with things being in, uh, ambivalent. So if you show a painting and you get it back, will you keep working on it? Yeah, probably. Unless it's like photographed and uh, <laughs> framed and I'll, I just, I know I won't look at it. So I don't even trust myself really to pick out the painting. So for this show, I picked out some. Then uh, they got filtered from my wife, Mika. And then they got filtered through you and Tina. So they're kind of... Uh, Michael, he'll he'll take things off the wall and paint on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it's always a, uh, you know, like a, a journey. Mm -hmm. We well, always want things to be just a little bit better. And that's hard to, that's kind of human nature though, too. True. So next to Ben, we have one of uh, Laura Mays' pieces. And uh, this one is called Half Moon, and it's an acrylic, acrylic on canvas. So if people have questions for the artists as we go, you can put them in the chat or uh, lob them out. Here we come again to Ruslan. Oh, Ruslan, you're muted. Done with the photograph done in Canada. Uh, blue mountains, green trees, pine trees. Uh, this is the second version. Um, maybe I went a little bit too dark on the top of the mountains. Maybe this is the should should have been a little bit lighter. But um, over the wall. Okay. <laughs> it was it it was it, it was nice. I I I I did it twice. I still I think I still have a third version in underpainting. But um, I like this to one took this one took all the gasoline which I had in my tank for this motif. So. That's it. Painting. This is this is where I I understand Julie so much about being challenged with the titles. Like when you paint every day, and when you do have produce a lot of paint, it's hard work to name them. I just do the painting. It's a painting. Come up with the titles. It's just too hard. Well, people. <laughs> People who buy paintings like titles. I know, but so this <laughs> one is Canadian Daydream. How's that? Yes, yes, excellent. <laughs> Can use it for like a public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> it is more picturesque than, for sure, than some some of them. I mean, it's, it's like a beautiful. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, it's, you, uh, you so, 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 sometimes you cannot avoid if you paint a lot of landscape. Sometimes, e even if I, you know, especially like my last uh, last few pieces, which I work in the studio, it's basically the uh, creek and uh, trees, trees from the left and from the right. And it's not that popular motif. You can, don't see it too much in the landscape. But this one is just a little bit more picturesque. It's happens. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. Well, it's not a bad thing. Um, I don't know. Mm. It is. It 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 is. It it is what it is. I I liked it. It's uh, stay in my head for a while. I painted once. I painted twice. Next. Now you're done. <laughs> Move on. Next one will be better. Um, I actually had a general question for the artists, if I may. Yes. Um, so I guess when I think of a landscape, I traditionally think of a picture plane that's more horizontally oriented. And I've noticed a lot of the artists today that there's a lot of square or more of uh, vertical pieces. And I'm just wondering for each of you, what drives you, that impulse for you to pick um, that particular type of shape? It's a motif. If the composition, if the, uh, if that thing with what grab your attention, what trigger, what what tickles you, when you look at the landscape, when you see this, uh, this is great. I'm gonna paint it. it. And uh, it all depends on what's make you excited. 
and uh, you see things, you pick up, you're starting to think, you do a small sketch, and um, then what you pick up, when you pick up the size. Usually you understand that it's, it's, um, it's come automatically. Maybe now it's more popular square and vertical is more popular because it's um, contemporary. I do not discriminate against any sizes and any vertical or horizontal or square. It all depends on the motif. It has to be the best, the best composition which you can, uh, you choose up uh, accordingly the most, the better composition. What the composition, whatever provides you with the better composition, which makes the bigger visual impact, that's how you, how I choose the, uh, will it be vertical, square or horizontal? That's it. You deal, well, it's, but it's, from another point of view, it's like cooking. You have a seed of the ingredients. You want to put a little bit more of this or a little bit put more of this. A little bit more sky, a little bit more land. And, um, but then again, uh, you see something beautiful, it's trigger you. Usually you know how you're going to paint in a, next two or three minutes. Once you started to pay it, sometimes you do the second version slightly different, but um, that's, again, the most expressive composition to communicate your amazement and enjoy what you see in the landscape. I'm sorry, to, I, took, I took too long, too much words. No worries, thank you. <laughs> Good. It's a great question, by the way, and tough, tough for an artist to answer that question. I think it, it, it also because you, you, I think it's also a little bit a reflection of the personality, like like everything in an art. But this is just like depending. It's it, the same things on uh, using the palette, using the colors, using the media. It's all coming from your temperament. And uh, it's uh, just to show how differently we all are thinking. Cho choosing of the size and choosing of the format is the result of uh, art of uh, its uh, of style of thinking. And uh, this is what make it unique. This is why we all we all thinking differently. And uh, this is why everybody come up to the. This is what's wonderful about it. But so many artists and everybody different. And they paint, put a hundred artists in front of uh, one motif and everybody will paint it different. And sometimes you just choose the size because it's the process you're working with right then and there. So you don't, uh, you don't double think it. You say, I'm doing squares today. <laughs> That's for me. <laughs> Um, but it's interesting because say if you work with a, on a commission and an interior decorator is involved, they will tell you the exact size they want for a space. Like they have a formula for that size and that's what they want, you know, kind of interesting. So, so if you're trained, you know, a trained person in that respect will know what will work. But as an artist, that's not going to be your preoccupation. Right. Okay. Thank you, Julia. Yeah. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. So we got on a couple more of yours here, Julie. Yeah, so those are again done up in Maine. Um, you might notice like that pink strip on the top left, um, it's, it's very thin. So one of the things I do with my collages is I peel the paper down to just the pigment layer 
And that's something I learned from when I was uh, working with a an antique screen restorer in Japan. After the academy, I went to Japan on a travel scholarship. And I worked with this guy because I wanted to learn as much about wood and glue and paper as I could. I ultimately studied, you know, I found out, oh, Katazome is still being done because I was living in Kyoto, which is a textile town. And everybody's doing Katazome to make uh, obis and really cottage industry stuff. So, um, so that's where I peel the paper down to such a thin layer before I apply it. There's tons of process involved in my work. It looks, you know, quick and easy and everything, but it could take hours just to get a piece of paper ready, really. Yes, it looks very spontaneous, but I know it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once yeah. you get in there, you're like very deceptive. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, parts are spontaneous, but a lot of it is the prep, you know, the prep. Like once you know where something's gonna go, then you have to do all that work. To get and just the tiniest little things, you know. Once I saw a Winslow Homer watercolor, and I think it was at the Academy, and on the little blurb, it said that the the conservators had discovered that he had used a knife to cut out like just little tiny bit of his painting. I mean, literally minuscule, minuscule. You could not see it except with a microscope, and inserted pigment in that and. I was always struck by that, how that, that attention to, to detail was extraordinary, but that's what put him that, you know, above, like his watercolors are amazing. His work is amazing, Winslow Homer. If, you know, I, I drank him up many years ago. That's one artist I went through, you know, absorbing all of his work. Um, but um, anyway. So that made a big, um, you know, now I really think about these little things. I'm trying to hone my skills all the time and hone my eye. So. Thank you, Julie. Sure. So Ben, um, this you've called Sunrise Sunset. Yeah, it kind of looks, oh, uh, for me, it, it kind of looked like a um, a sunset in like a video game, where it, the color is kind of just not so just a little off, you know. And it's a its own little world. It could be uh, the sun could be coming up or it could be coming down. The plants could be growing or the plants could be dying. That kind of uh, in between space. This is just something I'm just making marks on the painting in a way that I understand, kind of rendering forms and um, opening up forms and I'm letting the painting go where it needs to go. Yeah, the passages are quite wonderful in there. Oh, thank you. You could spend a lot of time just sort of moving from one to the other as a viewer as to like if, if you can do the acrylic start with the acrylic and do, work with the acrylic washes and then move in with uh, more oil washes and slowly build it up and just let it go where it goes you have a lot of line work in this can you describe how you make the lines you outline certain shapes partially and uh, yeah, I, um, we'll start with more gestural marks and then kind of just giving it that hard line kind of can add more permanency to it. But um, I always like like Picasso's drawings. They were just sketches with charcoal. And also I really like that graffiti line where you can just uh, give a uh, more improvised mark and you can outline it and it gives it a more permanent feel, if that makes sense. Beautiful.
Uh, so here's one of uh, Laura Mays' works. This is called uh, Eyes in the Sky. So here she's using combination acrylic paint and metal leaf. Got a little Gustav Klimt feel to me. Yes, yes, it does. A little Syrah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll move over to her other uh, piece. So this one is called Trees of Gold, and she's using a gold leaf here. They're quite wonderful in person. And you should know that, uh, you know, if you're interested to visit the gallery, you can. We are open uh, Wednesday through Friday, 10 to 6, Saturday, Sunday, 12 to 6. You can come and, and see the work. And also everything is available on our website. So uh, I'll put a link to the show in the chat and you can check things out there too. Everything is, everything from the exhibition is there. And then the last piece here is uh, Ruslan. Okay. This was the piece where, where all my uh, rediscovery of the um, small size landscape started with. This was the pioneer piece. And um, um it's okay <laughs> i don't i don't know i don't know what to tell it's um it's a painting your work reminds me a lot of uh the giovanni giacometti giacometti oh he's much no, smarter than i am no, no i'm much much be i'm much more simpleton no, his, his father, his father's paintings, Giovanni. Uh, father, I'm not familiar with his father. But he would, he would paint the Swiss landscape, so. Yeah, I, I well, mountains, mountains are mountains. And well, they, Ruslan, uh, it looks like they're very isolated places. How do you get there? Do you, are there uh, it's not that isolated places. Uh, first of all, I really don't like people in the landscapes. Right. I, uh, if there is some houses, I usually remove them. Uh huh. I see. I really. Uh, I was thinking about it. What? Uh, why am I? Uh, it's not probably right way would would say would be to say what I'm looking for internal in my landscape, but I really don't like any interruptions. Everything what's moving, like a people or car or something, I just disregard them. And sometimes if the houses, I uh, I move them out. But uh, this one I did. You just drive a lot. I drive a lot with the camera, and um, wherever you drive, I do the photo shoot. Uh, I do the photograph from the camera from my phone. Oh. And um, somehow I that that's what I choose. Right. That's what I. Choose. I was I probably missed. My favorite painting in the show is the lake. Right. And it's probably was the first painting which you which you look when I was absent. Is the Mike? Yes. Can I ask Tina to hmm. show the lake again? Okay, just a minute while we change course here. Okay. Okay, if if I am the last person and if I this Yep. This is my favorite painting. And this is probably the thickest painting which I ever done. In the end, I just really squeezed the paint, the green from the tube. And even if that's supposed to be 
hopefully I was I was good enough to make this paint looks like a color. I know what the artists really don't like, you know, just like, if you squeeze from the tube, this is not a color, this is the paint. Paint, have paint is not a color, but I did it, I like it, good painting, a lot of paint. Not as much as the Leon Kosov, it doesn't have to be twisted, so paint, you know, there is rumors about one of the painting of Leon Kosov, what it's have to be twisted around in the um, uh, Australian Museum because paint was so much paint what it's uh, what it's moved down under gravity. Not as much, pretty good. Good color, a lot of paint, good place. Ruslan's happy. So you're satisfied with this? One? I am satisfied with the paint. I am satisfied with the paint. It's very satisfying. I, I I am sorry. I again and take grabbing all the attention, but I just this is my favorite painting. I wanted to talk. I want to say what well, this is my favorite painting. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, Ruslan, and thank you to all the artists. Are there any questions? Last questions for her? I I before I if, if I can take one of yeah. Julie. I just wanted to say what, how you, I love your work. Oh. There is a mural based on your work on the Columbus Boulevard behind the hot dog stand. <laughs> Do you know which I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no? I think it's based on your work. You don't based know on the hot dog work there? And, it's, <laughs> and, be, and besides, I am big admirer of your work. This is the most my favorite, my favorite artists are impressionists. They were influenced by the Japanese art. In your art, what you do is the most beautiful and intelligent interpretation of the A Asian influence which I ever saw. Like Deep in Korn have the biggest rethinking of the Matisse legacy. I never saw anybody who so beautifully, elegantly, and smart, use the uh, Oriental or Japanese influence to create its own style, recognizable work. You are amazing. Are, are you talking to me? Yes, to you. To you. <laughs> yes, yes, Julie, to you. You are amazing. I am, so I I'm love your work. I'm, I'm I, am your, I am the fan of your work. <laughs> Ruslan, I'm a fan of your work myself. So, and it's an uh, awesome thing next to you. It really is. Uh, uh, it, we, for this, we all have to thank Mike and Tina. And I know what if I will ever stay, if I would, my name would ever be mentioned in Philadelphia history, it's only because Mike and Tina <laughs> let me ex exhibit my work in their gallery. Yeah. So my <laughs> legacy is solidified. Thank you, and, Mike, and thank you, Tina. And it's such a beautifully hung show. Like these segments of work, I, I just beautifully done. The hanging. Thank you. Tina does Agree. the show. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. So. Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions, I guess we'll um, finish here. Thank you again. What are the gallery hours? Uh, Wednesday through Friday, 10 to 6. Saturday, Sunday, 12 to 6. Okay. So we're here for you. Um, thanks again to Julie, Ben, Ruslan, and Laura if, who couldn't make it. Um, it's a beautiful show. We love your work. Um, and thanks to everyone who, who came today. So let's give the artists a round of applause. <laughs> Great talk, too. Lovely. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. All right. Have a good, have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, everybody. Mm -hmm.